Hello viewers. PAM is an OCT manifestation of retinal capillary ischemia, first reported in 2013. It was initially described by Saraf et al. as a variant of acute macular neuroretinopathy, but now PAM has been found to be a distinct entity which may occur either idiopathically, in which case it can occur even in younger individuals, or secondary to local retinal conditions when it is more likely to occur in the 50s and 60s. It has been reported after a number of systemic conditions as well. PAM is now considered a clinical finding rather than a disease. CRBO is the most common cause of PAM. The typical clinical history of idiopathic PAM is usually that of an acute onset of paracentral scotomas, blurred central vision and difficulty in focusing. Vision is normal or slightly reduced. Fundus examination can be normal or associated with deep, smooth, grayish lesions. The SD OCT picture is that of hyperreflective bands in the inner nuclear layer. To understand the pathogenesis, there are three capillary plexuses in the retina. The superficial capillary system lies predominantly in the ganglion cell layer and to a lesser extent in the nerve fiber layer. The deeper system is composed of an intermediate capillary plexus located along the inner portion of the inner nuclear layer at the border of the inner plexiform layer and a deep capillary plexus within the outer portion of the inner nuclear layer bordering the outer plexiform layer. PAM is believed to be due to an ischemic process in the intermediate and deep capillary plexus. The deep capillary plexus may be more susceptible to ischemia than other parts of the retina due to its location in the watershed zone with limited oxygen supply. These are the various modalities to detect PAM. We shall see these various modes with an example. This is the fundus of a young male with non-ischemic CRVO. There is a subtle grayish lesion in the region of the papillomacular macular bundle, but this can be easily missed. This is the OCT picture showing PAM. The autofluorescence imaging shows a hypofluorescent lesion. Near infrared reflectance imaging shows a grayish lesion with sharp borders in the papillomacular bundle. Fundus fluorescent angiography shows no great area of non-perfusion. Since FFA delineates only the superficial capillary plexus, PAM lesions are angiographically silent. FFA is nevertheless important for differential diagnosis. This is an on-face OCT showing edema at the level of the deep capillary plexus. This is an OCT picture of a lesion in another patient with PAM showing a deficiency of perfusion paraphobially. OCTA in the initial stages shows capillary dropout and in the chronic stages shows capillary ramification and pruning. In some acute cases, OCTA can be normal because of the phenomenon of retinal autoregulation that occurs during transient hypoperfusion in the absence of a true vascular occlusion. Subsequent reperfusion injury produces a picture of attenuation and pruning of the deep capillary plexus which correlates with inner nuclear layer atrophy. Central retinal artery occlusion should be considered in patients with diffuse PAM even with normal clinical and OCT angiographic findings. The use of OCTA in conjunction with on-face OCT has proved superior to other imaging modalities in identifying PAM. Sridhar et al. studied on-face OCT with its advanced capability to accurately delineate ischemic areas at different retinal levels which showed three different patterns in PAM. Arteriola which is a band-like middle retinal hyperreflectivity due to occlusion in the distribution of a major arteriole, globular pattern, which may show focal or multifocal ovoid hyperreflective patches, and a firm-like pattern with perivenular hyperreflectivity, mostly seen in CRVO cases. This particular picture is that of a branch retinal artery occlusion with fern pattern. If a CZO retinal artery occlusion and a CRVO are present together, 
both in arteriosa and fern pattern may be seen. The main differential diagnosis is acute macular neuroretinopathy. This is a much more rare entity with less than 100 reported cases in the literature in the last four decades. And typically it affects young healthy women from the teens to the 30s. The hyperreflective band like AMN lesions develops slightly lower at the junction of the outer plexiform and outer nuclear layers and there may be associated disruption of the ellipsoid and interdigitation zones. In idiopathic cases, full resolution of scotomas has been reported but partial resolution is the most common outcome. Those cases that do not spontaneously resolve develop long-term effects such as thinning and atrophy of the affected inner nuclear layer which is responsible for the permanent visual defects. In secondary cases, visual impairment depends on the associated causative pathology. There is no treatment for PAM per se. Rule out systemic risk factors and diffuse disease without typical findings may be a sign of occult CRAO and so carotid disease and GCA have to be ruled out. So that's it for today. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from AP's Ophthalmology Pulse. You may watch my other videos by clicking on the thumbnails. Please leave a note in the comment section if you wish for any particular topic to be covered in future. Look forward to regular updates. Thank you for watching.